Um, I want you to be here too. Please don't leave. This is Reviewer TV. We're, we're here with uh, Mark Kearns from um, the uh, Free Speech Coalition. The, he's the AVN staff member. And, uh, and, and, and Tom um, Himes. Himes, who is also with the Free Speech Coalition. Um, you both were in the, uh, you were at the, uh, the legal uh, symposium uh, discussion panel yesterday. So um, are, you a, are you a lawyer, Tom? No, I'm not. Okay, and you're not a lawyer, but you, you know lawyers. You're not a talk but lawyer. I play one on TV. <laughs> That's why we talk about that. You've been on TV. <laughs> yeah, you got a legal ad. I, I told him, I, I can swear that I've seen him and heard his voice before, so because I've seen him on a movie somewhere, but he said he was in a movie. Anyways, tell us about the Free Speech Coalition. How did the organization come into being? What happened that made it uh, be uh, conceived? Sure. Uh, well, Free Speech Coalition was originally called the uh, Free Speech Legal Defense Fund. It was formed in uh, about 1991. Okay. And it was in response to the fact that the federal government had done a lot of uh, legal actions against us. Uh, for one thing, it uh, it organized an incredible sting operation, which is called My Porn, uh, short for Miami Pornography. And what they did was they set up a fake retailing uh, outfit in Miami and ordered a bunch of movies from producers in California and New York. And when the movies arrived, they decided they were obscene and they issued arrest warrants for the owners of the companies that had made the videos. Um, also, uh, right around that time was the first time they tried to implement the federal uh, record-keeping and labeling law, which we now call uh, 18 U.S.C. 2257, and we're even right now in the court still trying to get that uh, uh, still trying to get that struck down. But uh, the first uh, uh, 2257 laws were passed in I think 1988 or 89. Uh, and so the federal government in those days was very active against the adult industry and the industry realized it had to form an organization to fight uh, those battles. And out of that came Free Speech Coalition and uh, we've been in business ever since. And let me just add, it was about in 2004 when the federal government started doing 2257 inspections that, uh, that FSC got a major bump in membership and also really shifted its focus, its focus onto 2257, other online issues, and expanded its, uh, its range of issues to meet the, the needs of the new digital uh, economy. Right, because I mean, with 2257, you have to keep records and you also have to list a physical address. Absolutely. For, for, for un, unplanned, unannounced inspections, supposedly, right? Yep. And, and that's kind of intimidating if you're, you know, uh, Barbara Jones, who's a college student, she wants to do a selfie website. She isn't going to list her home physical address. Absolutely. So, yep. are there any, I mean, until they get 2257 struck down, is there any vendors that you know of that charge a reasonable price to act as uh, a 2257 records keeper? There, there are several uh, 2257 uh, records keepers. Uh, a lawyer can do it now. There's some uh, cottage industry people who are doing that. Um, you know, I, I'm not into uh, recommending not anyone, but they're certainly out there. And and so, you know, that you don't have to put your home address. You can have someone else do it if you have the resources to do it. You can even have the original con you can list the original content owner um, uh, as, as the record keeper now. Um, so, you know, uh, the government uh, has, has, in its way, attempted to, uh, through negotiations, mitigate some of the worst things. Um, but then also in the litigation, they're trying to undo some of those mitigations. So we're still very much in the fight. And if somebody wanted to join the Free Speech Coalition, how would they do that? You got a website and is it they would go to freespeechcoalition.com. Okay. They can become. They don't even need to be an uh, a member of the industry. Uh, it's only twenty five dollars. I think yeah, that is what it is now to be to join as an individual. Uh, if it's a company, it's uh, there's different tiers. Works and uh, look, we really. I've always encouraged it. Uh, uh, we we certainly do. It's not just obscenity. It's not just two two fifty uh, two two five seven. There's a range. It's not just the condoms, you name it. Uh, and, and it's not just testing, which FSC does. You name it. Uh, with very limited resources, they are trying, attempting to address it. This is a trade association for a major entertainment industry that has barely any resources at its disposal. 
So it needs the support of this industry. So other than uh, information, education, articles and stuff, if somebody was to join the Free, free Speech Coalition, would they get any resources like uh, legal counsel? Well, or, there, I don't know. There, are some, there, are, there are some of those things. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, and, and Diane Duke, the, uh, the, now the CEO, has uh, been working very hard to add perks and membership benefits and all types of things and continues to do that. So yeah, there are benefits to joining beyond just doing the right thing. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks, guys.